Good afternoon, and thank you to uh, Paul and Douglas, um, and thank you to Amati for allowing me the opportunity to uh, come and talk to you today about um, what I would consider to be the most exciting retail opportunity that there is out there on the landscape uh, today. But before I do, I'd like to give you a brief insight and introduction um, to my background. Um, I joined Crawshaws in uh, March the 1st of this year, after 17 years with Lidl. Might be a household name today that most of you are familiar with. Um, the last uh, 12 and a half years um, with the company, I spent as Chief Operating Officer for the UK business. Um, the first few years were spent in various senior roles, director roles within the organisation in the UK. Also included a stint um, over in Germany for just over a year, um, which gave me great exposure um, to how a well-oiled uh, quality value proposition and business um, is run, as well as, of course, being able to be parachuted back to the UK in my COO capacity as a fluent German to speak the international business language. It was fair to say that whilst I was in the UK, my school pigeon French wasn't really going to get me very far in a German organisation. Um, so under my leadership and guidance of uh, the last 12 years, uh, some of the notable and key achievements during that time um, the business, 200 stores, uh, when I was first parachuted back from Germany um, 12 years ago, and uh, when I left just over 600 stores, uh, translating into a sales growth from 700 million to almost 4.5 billion. Um, quite happy to say that no doubt the business is jumping quite well forwards over the 5 billion mark uh, this year. And one of the notable and relevant, particularly with my current role, um, achievement was also some investment in the key initiative for the discounter on the fresh proposition and including the fresh meat and poultry side and uh, that approximately five years ago was the equivalent of around 63 64 million pound in sales and then after a five-year uh, focus and push on these initiatives um, finished around 340 million in one year so that really gives you a bit of an insight into, into my background and, and what brought me to to Crawshaws as CEO was the um, fantastic prospect. And as I said, uh, the, the most important thing for me was the prospects of the business and it being the most exciting uh, retail opportunity there is out there today. Um, I think I can stand here with a little bit of confidence and say, well, I've done it before and my intention is to do it again to create another legacy and a national brand. So who are Cr Crawshaws? Well, uh, a fresh meat and food to go retailer. Um, with stores across northern England. So we sell uh, fresh meat, uh, a wide variety of fresh meats, and also food to go at quality, well, quality produce at the value prices. So we have 34 stores today across northern England. 23 of them are on the Crawshaw side, the Crawshaw's brand, and 11 on the Gabbett side. Gabbett's was acquired uh, in April this year. Uh, it came with the 11 stores, one of which was a, a meat mart and um, also combined with a very small distribution platform. So that was in April this year, and currently um, the main factory distribution hub is in Rotherham, uh, Hellaby near Rotherham, um, as we are today. In terms of the, the retail portfolio, the representation that we have is uh, shopping centres inside, outside, anchored onto shopping centres and malls, high streets, town centres. Uh, we also have three market stalls, and uh, in addition, we have two meat marts. So we've got really good diversification. So both in a desktop review and also enough experience for us to draw on that as part of our growth strategy and where we intend to uh, maintain that diversification with our growth strategy um, going forward. So in terms of the retail proposition, I've already mentioned the fresh meat and food to go. Fresh meat equates to 65% of our business. Um, and uniquely, the, uh, the fresh meat that we take in comes into all of our stores via the distribution centre in Primal Cuts. So the Primal Cuts come into the business. You can see there by the, the theatre of what we would call the local butcher angle to our business um, comes into store. Um, our in-store butchers, they slice, dice, tray, shrink wrap, label and put within the multi-decks within our stores. So very efficient. Um, fantastic vertical integration in terms of the supply chain and all of the merchandising is then driven by the fixed price points that you can see there illustrated £2.50, £5.10 and then at the end we also 
have the Manager's Cut, which is a weekly special offer that we've uh, recently introduced. Um, each of those prize points come with multi-buys. So within the multi-buy 250, you can get three for six, five for 10, and so on and so forth. So it caters for every possible customer. Important to note within that, the reason why we operate after some extensive testing in the business on the fixed price points, it allows us to also react very, very quickly to um, buying um, prices, the, the fluctuations in meat, um, and also allows us to react very quickly whether we're going to um, drive cash margin or whether we would like to win some friends and drive sales as well um, and just invest a bit in price. So all of the individual products are actually weighted. So the weight of those um, on average between each price point is approximately 30 to 50 lines within each of those price points. So a really vast range within that that would complement any household or any customer that comes through our doors. Interestingly as well, where we have the space, we also maintain the loose meat serve over counter. Um, so the customers can see the theatre within the store of this fresh meat proposition. The remaining 35% food to go. Uh, this is the classic um, food on the go, food to take home. We have a breakfast menu, a lunch menu, a dinner menu. Um, important is, though, that the ingredients, um, particularly when it comes to the cooked chickens, they're from our fresh range. The wet food is from our fresh range. So all of the food that we cook, with the exception, of course, such as potatoes, wedges, fries, popcorn chicken, and the like that you would expect as well, that the um, ingredients are actually used from the fresh side of the business that can be transferred over as part of the core ingredients for the food to go range as well. And another key aspect of the com competitive advantage for that is it means uniquely for our business and my previous experience as well as looking at competition would suggest that normal wastage figures would be anything from three to five percent known waste. Um, for us it's almost zero because we're able to utilise any product that's getting within one or two days of its, of its life. That's what the in-store, the managers and the in-store butchers are able to capitalise on that and then use that on the cook side of the business and be able to offer something quite special. Whether you're on the uh, west of the Pennines on the Manchester side, it might be a big promotion on Hot Pot. If you're on the east side of the Pennines, it might be something else such as a curry um, or a chilli. That I'm just mentioning, uh, it's not stereotypical, it's just simply mentioning some of our fastest and best-selling lines. So that's the stores, the retail proposition. Taking a step back, how do we service the stores? Um, how do we deliver the produce to the stores? Well, this is via our main distribution center in Hellaby. This is another key competitive advantage. It's fully vertically integrated. We have 85% of the produce that comes in, comes in the whole primal cuts. We don't deal in carcasses. It's already pre-cut into the whole fresh uh, primal cuts. We turn those around very quickly and send them to stores. The other 15% approximately is what we produce in-house. So we have award-winning sausages, a range at the moment of 11 or 12. We're currently producing another seven or eight, which we will be rotating on a seasonal basis um, as and when the weather changes. An important point of that as well, which adds further to competitive advantage, is our own fleet um, of refrigerated vehicles. Completed 100% internally means that we can react to weather conditions. Um, if we have individual stalls that are, that are performing very well, rather than rely on suppliers who, when you need something at short notice, would normally charge a premium on price, um, we're able to ship more stock to stalls very, very quickly or do overtime in the factory to produce stock um, more quickly uh, for the stalls. So the time that we would have uh, missing items and availability is significantly reduced. So, of course, the key questions when you look at the store environment, you look at the uh, factory environment and the distribution environment, uh, the th three key questions when we talk about supply chain and products uh, sourcing. Um, one is quality, the other is volume, and the other is, of course, price. Now, when we're talking about quality, I think it's fair to say we all know that uh, Great Britain has some great meat. Well, that doesn't necessarily mean that every other country outside these waters um, sells substandard or poor quality. I think for most of us who may know some South American um, or South African chains, gauchos and the like, um, would know full well that actually a lot of the meat globally is of uh, a significantly high standard. So from our perspective, we work in the spot market, not on contract, and we also source globally. And we're not restricted to the UK. So that effectively means that we can source, um, when we're talking producers, we're also talking importers, 
we can actually cut out the middleman, thus further savings, and also speeding up the time in which we can get the stock as well. And when we're talking about um, volume as well, well, globally, meat production last year, around 312 million tonnes. For the UK, meat production was around 5.3 million tonnes. If we look at the uh, tonnage for both the Crawshaws and the Gabbett side, the business that we acquired, that combined those two businesses is around 12,000 tonnes. So when we're talking about 0.2% of the meat production just of the UK alone, I think there's significant volume out there for us to grow, whether from 34 stalls to 100 or 200, of, of which we'll come to shortly. All of these competitive advantages culminate together and effectively translate into a price that we can pass on to the customer. Um, you see here was one day, one snapshot um, of including promotional prices that just says, how do we compare? What you can see there on the end is the average, most interestingly on the last column, uh, our price is in the grey. And then the final one, of course, how much cheaper we are than the supermarkets. Of course, that's just on that given day. One, one uh, of course, point on there on the sausages at 4% where we were only cheaper. There was some promotional activity with the supermarkets and we weren't doing um, a promotion. When we do a promotion of, um, certainly in the Northern Territories where it's still working in pounds, not kilos, um, which is commonplace, uh, certainly with the butchers, five pound for five pound on sausages makes us between 55 and 60% cheaper than the supermarket. So that gives you an idea that uh, between 30 and 35% is the normal when we're looking at pricing. We can sometimes only be 15%. Um, and whilst we're using those figures between 10 and 15%, we say, well, how do we compare against the other quality value propositions, such as uh, my old employer? Um, by and large, Crawshaws, we are around 10 to 15% cheaper than the discounters as well. So we're confident that we can be cheaper. We can't guarantee that we'll always be 30 to 35% cheaper, but we're confident that we can certainly be uh, cheaper um, in the main. So with that in mind, uh, a few headline figures. Uh, you can see sales over the last two years have grown, total sales by over 30%, and like for like, uh, sales have grown by 5% 5 and 11% respectively. With EBITDA, um, 1.6 million, and something that Douglas had already alluded to, typical in retail, where the EBITDA is, is somewhat lower, um, that there translates into 6.5%. Notwithstanding, of course, in 2015, when we look at those figures, we were already starting to invest ahead of the curve and had uh, additional costs, in particular personnel costs, um, of course, my recruitment being one of them. So when we look at the figures, very promising figures um, with a very promising model, um, if we look at that and say, well, how does the current performance um, work against our model? and our refined model. Um, yellow is our performance of last year with the breakdown, um, which is individual store. So per store in yellow, the current portfolio average, which excludes some of our wholesale sales to not distort the figures, um, you can see over one million pounds per year per store. Um, important to highlight as well, when we're talking about the butcher industry, around 2.2 billion, which the butcher industry um, uh, equates to last year, according to eBlex, um, the average uh, annual sales of a butcher is around £370,000 per year. Uh, we currently sit at over £1 million, and even if you took uh, only the 65%, which is our fresh meat proposition, that puts us almost still double um, of the average uh, turnover of the butchers within the industry. And it also gives you an indication as a quality value proposition. It's about the quality value proposition, and certainly through my experience, is all about volume. So the, uh, on the right-hand side, you can see the three grey columns, uh, in, in specifically the middle one, which is the refined base, uh, base model. Uh, that's a model of our store that we've looked at, refined, um, both desktop and also physically in our stores. That gives you a clear idea is our turnover margin and associated cost expectations and also the expectations at store level uh, EBITDA contribution. And when you see that against, well, are we going to grow? How can we grow? Is it something that's sustainable? Is it scalable? Well, it's a very, very simple model. What we have, 34 stores, and again, important to highlight, 34 stores that are all profitable. I've never come across, um, speaking to colleagues over many years, um, that 
a portfolio, even with a mixed bag, whether you've got 30 stores, 100 stores, or 300 stores, the reality is the mixed bag means you've got some real cash cows there, but you've also got some loss-making stores that you need to carry and work on in terms of promotional activity. In this case, we have all of our stores, every one of them in terms of their representation, profitable. What it also means is we have a, a model that's set up, that's proven, that we will actually use and demonstrate for all of our new stores being profitable from day one. Not only profitable from day one, they're highly cash generative with a short, back, uh, short payback period. You can see the capex that we're looking at um, is around 250,000. That's come down consistently every year where um, only four or five years ago, it was around 500,000. Um, currently sat at 250,000 and with further refinements on the equipment, the energy efficiencies, and also the volume with our expansion. Um, we're in the process of renegotiating with all new suppliers, uh, sorry, with all existing suppliers, as well as bringing in new suppliers, where we anticipate a minimum five or 6% reduction on this current 250 capex. So in terms of our growth, you can see where we are at the very bottom of uh, January 2015, our financial year end, 22 stores. This year, um, we expect to uh, extend the portfolio by a further 17, so we will finish on 39. So of the 34 stores we have now, uh, we have five more in the pipeline um, that are going to open pre-Christmas. Um, we have a, a store opening next month in Bolton. Um, if anyone's interested uh, to attend the opening. And uh, we also have one the following month in Bury, just down the road. So that's uh, some new openings that we're really looking at on the new territories of Gabbets. Um, and with those Gabbet stores, we will, over time, um, be refurbished. What we would call a sparkle more than a refurbishment. Refurbishment sounds expensive. We will give them a sparkle and rebrand them under the Crawshaws. Uh, but this gives us an opportunity for the first two of the new six stores for this year um, to be uh, west of the Pennines under the Crawshaws face. Next year, 15 stores. We anticipate this 15 stores um, being the minimum that we could open next year, and that will take um, our portfolio up to 54, so by Christmas next year, trading out of 54 stores. What you can see there, then, is the rapid growth and where we can up the ante um, and on numbers that we are absolutely confident that we can deliver. Um, certainly from my experience, the most stores I opened in my previous role uh, were 78, um, we don't intend opening 78 stores um, for this business because I'm well aware of the challenges and pitfalls and pressures that that put on the business during those times. But certainly a gradual process, one that we um, are geared up that in the event that we are able to speed up the process, uh, then we will do so. Interestingly, you can see 200 stores, which is our target within the next seven to eight years, also means our potential market share today sits at 1.6% within the butcher industry. We anticipate when we look at the butcher industry, which over many years has previously been in decline, has stabilized somewhat. And if it continues to stabilize on the current level that it has over the last 12 to 18 months, we will anticipate in this period to be really running at between eight um, and uh, eight and nine percent. Expansion, phase geographical spread, that's always a, a key question that's, that's asked. Well, where are we going to go and how are we going to do it? Enough rich pickings in the current area, and in addition, um, just going on the peripheral, that's going to be really um, uh, in this catchment without uh, over overstretching ourselves so we can build up the teams to be able to deliver this. Of course, one thing to remember is our key advantage is that our meat marts, what we call the factory outlets, are attached to the factory itself. So if we wanted to take a hop, skip and jump down the southwest, down the southeast or the northeast, the most obvious areas that we, we would be expected to go, um, when we would do that, we are able to open a factory combined with a factory outlet or a meat mart, uh, trade out of that meat mart, and then in that immediate catchment um, in that year, by the time we're opening 20 stores, at least 15 will be in that catchment area as well. So in summary... Um, all of those points um, I've pretty much touched upon um, as I've gone through the presentation. I think more importantly is the very last one that the uh, funding is already in place to facilitate the growth plans. Um, so we don't anticipate, even with that aggressive uh, plan, uh, we don't anticipate needing to raise any more share capital. 
So it was a whistle stop uh, tour of our business and hopefully has given you a, a very good insight of the uh, exciting journey. And hopefully now you can see why I've referred to it as the most exciting retail opportunity um, out there on the landscape at the moment, because certainly from, from our perspective, um, we don't see any other retailer looking to expand uh, as quickly as what we intend to do. So thank you very much.